In today's world, we sometimes don't truly understand how large some companies are. The growth of apps like Square, PayPal, and Stripe have seen wild valuations of up to $100 billion, almost as much as well-established organizations like Citigroup, meaning tech-enabled digital finance is now engulfing some of its more traditional competitors. Plaid Technologies is one of those businesses. Known as the plumbing for many of the apps we use today like Acorns, Betterment, Coinbase, and Clarity Money. Some have described Plaid Technologies as being the shovels and pans of the Bitcoin, stock picking, and financial planning gold rush, the tools of the trade that help apps to identify users' bank accounts moving on from penny microtransactions. But what is Plaid Technologies and how were they founded? Here's how it happened. First of all, what is Plaid? As we said, Plaid works as the plumbing that connects apps to users' bank accounts to confirm the account holders. It's a financial aggregator that offers an API or an application programming interface, allowing companies to connect to their users' bank accounts. Plaid then makes its money by charging a fee for using its service, operating a freemium business model. But Zach Parrott describes the journey to founding Plaid as somewhat of a lucky accident. Parrott began his career working in financial services for Bain Consulting, and quickly saw that the financial industry was lagging behind massively when it came to technology. He didn't find consulting massively interesting and wanted to join a startup. Alongside his friend, William Hockey, who he'd met at Bain, the pair then started a series of side projects to understand what sort of startup they wanted to join. They built an app called Rambler that mapped out consumer banking activity, but they quickly found that extracting data from banks and making it useful and available to the general public was particularly difficult. So they started building their own bank integrations, which led to interest not in their app, but in their back-end infrastructure. That was their light bulb moment that they could build a business from their technology and their infrastructure. So they set up in New York in 2012 with Parrot as CEO and Hockey as CTO. And they struck gold instantly, working with Venmo to help settle payments faster, as Venmo were historically settling transactions in big batches, but allowing customers to transact instantly. This was an issue for Venmo, as it meant that they would have to put up the cash until the payments settled. But with Plaid, they could transact with banks in real time. And so Plaid built Venmo's back-end infrastructure, which they still use to this day. This business development meant they needed employees, engineers to support the growing franchise. The duo relocated to San Francisco with that in mind, but also to try and raise money. That was easier said than done though, with two first-time founders unable to explain their vision in layman's terms, and they were rejected upwards of 50 times. This frustrated but didn't deter the pair. They finally hit the jackpot in 2013 when Spark Capital agreed to seed the business with almost $3 million in funding. They spent this money on new engineers and software developers, reinvesting back into the business which in turn made their software more effective and grew their client base, staying in the shadows whilst they worked on their creation. Three years later and Plaid was propelled into the limelight, initially announcing a $44 million funding round led by Goldman Sachs, but also finding themselves faced with a lawsuit from Yodley, one of their biggest competitors who said that Plaid infringed on their patents. Undeterred, Plaid licensed all 78 of the patents by February 2017, and they didn't let the lawsuit phase them, as Plaid had reached 10,000 customers, including Citi, Wells Fargo, and Chase, as well as Robinhood and Wealthfront. As of 2018, Plaid started to increase its offering, launching a product called Assets for Lenders, as well as almost doubling its customer base through an expansion into Canada, their first foreign market. That same year, they also raised $250 million at a $2.65 billion valuation. They used the money quickly, acquiring Quovo, an investments-focused competitor, for $200 million. In 2019, Plaid expanded further abroad, to the UK as well as across Europe, which was more challenging than you might think. US banks develop and maintain their own infrastructure, but in Europe, banking follows European standards known as PSD2, open banking. This meant that Plaid had to launch a number of smaller, country-specific Plaids rather than layering their process into a pan-European 
European strategy. 2019 also brought an end of the dynamic duo, with William Hockey deciding to step back into a more strategic advisory role rather than running the business day to day. By January 2020, the biggest moment in Plaid's short life was the announcement that Visa would acquire the business for $5.3 billion. Sounds good, but it was short-lived. Just eight months later, and regulators in the US, the Department of Justice, said that it had large antitrust concerns with the merger, filing a lawsuit against Visa, calling it a monopolist in online debit transactions, trying to eliminate a nascent competitive threat. By January 2021, just one year later, and the acquisition was dead in the water. But Plaid has continued to grow, and has seen increased demand as they embed their software with fintechs in the industry. To support further growth and expansion efforts, Plaid then raised another $425 million at a valuation of $13.4 billion, more than double Visa's offer, in a year where they generated $117 million in revenue, growing their bottom line by more than 60%. A nice valuation for the two founders who own around 12% each. This is all well and good, but how does Plaid actually work? Well, users need to connect their bank accounts to apps like Acorn or Robinhood to deposit and withdraw money. Traditionally, this would have used a legacy system which would have meant a new connection between each app and bank. Plaid solves this by offering an intermediate connection layer through an API. Let's say someone is creating a Robinhood account to trade the markets. Once they've logged in, Plaid's code within the app takes their username and password and then packages the information to make it safer to send to the banks. Plaid then pings the bank's server to verify the account has a positive balance. The bank immediately responds to confirm the account has money in it, which authenticates the account, and the user continues on blissfully unaware that any of this just happened. Plaid then maintains the tokenized version of the login details, which is activated whenever the user uses the app. This helps to track spending limits and goals or checking identities to minimize fraudulent transactions. In essence, it acts as an intermediary to maintain relationships between apps and bank accounts. Plaid then makes its money from the fees it charges to the apps. Its freemium model means the first 100 connections with banks are free, but everything above that is paid via subscription fees and payment fees. Plaid's success is somewhat surprising to some in the industry due to their uptime of around 95-98%, to 98%, which sounds good but goes against the three nines rule or the idea that software should run 99.9% .9 of the time as expected. But Plaid is at the mercy of the banks, who are quite unwilling to give over information especially to apps that don't do anything for their bottom line. Plaid are also fairly aware that at any moment the banks could join together to offer their own joint APIs, undercutting Plaid and running them out of business. Or maybe that will be one of Plaid's competitors that do that, like Yodli or Finicity, especially because Plaid was first to the party and its customers aren't yet shopping around to see if they can get the same service cheaper elsewhere. But Hockey sees Plaid as a core building block for new startups, because they're effectively gatekeepers for the financial services system, reaching tens of millions of end users. Plaid is now being used in the same sentence as Stripe when it comes to digitizing payments, and like Stripe, Plaid are solving problems that were incredibly hard to do previously. We wouldn't be surprised if they IPO'd throughout 2022, and if they did, who knows what their valuation would be. Leave us a comment down below what you think will happen, and that's how it happened.